which direction that God wants us to do, what he wants us to do. But just before I take a step further uh, to introduce our friend, uh, whom also he is a guest preacher for today, allow me to say uh, I am very impressed to see people grow in this journey. Amen. Bongi, yeah. thank you, Ben. Uh, I spoke to Bongi during the week. I request, I asked Bongi to conduct the offering service. And when I spoke to her, she said, no, me, not me. <laughs> that, are you serious? Me, Bongi? I said, yes, you. I said, no, I'm scared. I cannot do that. And then when she said, no, 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 I'm scared, I said, that's the good attitude. You're supposed to be scared. Because we have a problem of the people that are not scared of God. They, they don't fear God. They don't fear God. And because of they don't fear God, they do all these nonsensical things. They say all this rubbish behind the pulpit. And we think that is God, why it's not God. Because we need to understand that uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all understanding all wisdom we have to fear God. that's why he is god we have to reverence we have to respect god because he is god so Bongi, thank you i am sitting there and i'm listening also watching the growth i hope that umfana no mamufana and puma abani puma puma today excitement to see your child standing up front here speaking the word of god it's a blessing to me to see my own child, you know, mm -hmm. speaking the word of God uh, with such an understanding and clarity. Mm -hmm. May the Lord continue to use you. Amen. And may the Lord continue to raise you to become, uh, you know, his servant. Mm -hmm. Not a man's servant, but his servant. Amen. Well, so this morning, we are honored on this Mother's Day, Bomama. Amen. 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 Because this morning we have a man that has traveled more than thousand kilometers to be here this morning. Not just to be here in Naisna, but when we extended the invitation to him to come and speak on this special day, he did not decline, but accepted such an invitation to come and speak. Amen. And it is a blessing 
could be speaking anywhere. He could have been anywhere by now, speaking, you know, to other people and accept you, but he chose to accept the will of God to be here. Amen. That's really a blessing. But before I introduce him, allow me to introduce uh, my friend, my colleague, my partner in crime, <laughs> my brother from another mother. <laughs> Allow me to introduce the man that you are familiar with, who has preached behind this pulpit not once but number of times. Head hunger. This is my friend. This is my colleague. He is my partner in crime. I am glad as a colleague. A man that I can trust when I'm away. Yes, in these days, it's not easy to trust someone with a prepared. You trust someone with a prepared, you go away, you trust someone with a prepared. When you come back, oh, gosh, the church is closed. People have moved. People have migrated somewhere else. So, help me is one of the men that I trust along this chain. Today we have a man that I consider as a brother. I told him the last time we met that if we don't see each other here, surely we shall meet back home in heaven. Amen. And fortunately enough, God made us to meet again. His name is John Shaft. Good. Did I do justice? That's pretty good. That's pretty Thank good. you. Here's John Sharp. He is married to a woman. And <laughs> one wife. Her name is Heather. Am I correct? You are. You I are. have a problem with names. So I'm doing justice this morning. Wow. Uh, John, he is a pastor but not just a pastor, but also a father. John and Heather, they are raising four biological children. And he is pastoring a Baptist church known as a Lighthouse Baptist Church overseas. Today, John, he is going to be our preacher. Amen. Allow me, my dear mothers, fathers, my brothers and sisters, my children, allow me, I don't want to stand between the message and you. Amen. So this morning I am not going to interpret. Yeah. I am not going to interpret because I want you to receive it organic. Yes. I want you to eat organic food. <laughs> so I wanted to hear. I want you. I want you to get it from the horse's mouth. He's not a horse. <laughs> so this morning I'm not going to be interpreting because I know we watch generation. I know we watch this in the service. So no one here who is dumb. We are all here wise because we are the children of the Lord. Yeah. Now, if you have a problem of not catching some of the words, please ask your neighbor. That won't be seen. Amen. But I'm going to allow John to speak to us. I am hungry and I am thirsty to hear the Lord speak through him to me. Amen. Without wasting any more time, please, let's welcome the man of God behind this pulpit. When we welcome him, Please, let us get a, a song that we're going to be able to join in Kuyo song. In fact, what it was with Tabela will be Tabelin, the one that is here. Bong, I'm a
We pray that may you speak to us audibly. Mm -hmm. Speak so clear, God, that we may hear you and understand you, what the Spirit is saying to us. Amen. Lord, we humble ourselves before the throne of your grace. We ask you to feed us. We ask you, O oh God, to quench our thirst. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that may you speak to our situations, mm -hmm. speak to our lives. Rebuke us, O oh God. Break us and mend us again. Mm -hmm. Father, clean us with your word. Yes, I pray for your servant as he is about to deliver your message. Lord, anoint the lips of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Let the words that are going to come out of his mouth come, Lord, to us whom we are listening. Come as a seed, Lord God Almighty, to a good ground. Mm -hmm. And let thy seed, when it falls at due season, that it may produce fruit, mm -hmm. fruit that will remain. Yes. All that the enemy has planned, we stand against it, we declare them null and void. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, we pray that all the glory and honor may come back to you, Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As John comes forth, can we clap for the Lord? You are welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Pastor John from America, from the state of Wisconsin. I left all my ties back in America, so I have no tie. Sorry, Pastor. And I have I left all my suit coats back in America. So, uh, and I don't fit in Herb's clothes. So I'm a little underdressed today. I want to talk to you about the greatness and the goodness of our God. Amen. And how we, as his people, are to praise him at all times and in all places. Amen. And I'm going to be talking to you from Psalm 113. Psalm 113. If you have your Bible, turn with me. It's only nine verses. Let me read it first. Notice how it begins and how it ends with praise the Lord. Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise those servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. The Lord is high above all nations, His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who dwells on high, who humbles Himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth? He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is a great God. Amen. Our God is a good God. Amen. And we are to praise the Lord. Amen. Look, in verse number one, it says, praise the Lord, Amen. and it says, Praise, O oh, servants of the Lord. Amen. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior today? Amen. Have you accepted Him by faith, trusting in Him for salvation? Mm -hmm. That you are a servant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. You are to do His will, yes. what He wants. Mm -hmm. And listen, servant of the Lord, if that's you today, what God wants from you more than anything else more than your money, more than your time. He wants your praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And look, it says in verse number two, 
It says in verse number two, it says, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. It means God doesn't want just your praise today. He wants your praise tomorrow yeah. and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and for the rest of your life. Amen. And he just doesn't want your praise. He wants the praise of your children and your grandchildren. Amen. And he wants your praise when life is good. And he wants your praise when life is hard and bad. Remember Job. Job in one day. All of his animals killed. All of his children killed. Yes. He praised the Lord that day. Yeah. The Lord gives. The Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He wants your praise. Praise the Lord. And when you die or he comes back. You will continue to praise the Lord in his presence Amen. for all of eternity. Amen. We will be doing this for the rest of our lives, which will not end for a child of God, Amen. for all of eternity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me ask you, why should we praise the Lord Amen. at all times and in all places? And notice even it says in verse number three, from the rising of the sun, to its going down, yes. the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. Now, what this means is the sun rises in the east. I don't know where east is. Mm -hmm. East, mm -hmm. sun rises mm -hmm. to the east, mm -hmm. and the sun sets to the west. Yeah. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the idea here is you look, when the sun comes up, it seems like it's a long ways away, mm -hmm. that way. And when it goes down, it seems like it's a long ways in that direction that way. Amen. And what God wants is, God wants where the, all the way to that way, to all the way to this way, in every place God wants to be praised. Amen. Amen. Every place is holy ground. God wants to be worshipped and glorified wherever you are. In here, in your home, down in the city in your schools, in every place, from the rising of the sun to its going down. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But why should we praise the Lord? And that's what it goes on to talk about. Verse 4 talks about how great our God is. There's no one like our God. That's why it says, who is like the Lord our God? Who is like the Lord our God? No one is like the Lord our God. It says here in verse number four, it says, His greatness, the Lord is high above, mm. high above all nations, mm. and His glory is above the heavens. Yeah. Mm. The picture is of this great and awesome God who is, who is way up there, and He towers over all of His creation. Who is like the Lord our God? Mm -hmm. no. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No one greater. No one higher. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah chapter 40, it talks about how great God is. Mm -hmm. And it says, it uses, it uses pictures, and it says that he can, this God is so great and so big that he can measure all of the waters, mm -hmm. all of the waters, the Indian Ocean in the hollow of his hand. That's how big our God is. Mm -hmm. And it says he can measure the he can measure the sky with a with a span that's the width of your hand. It's like God is so big that he can measure the entire sky with his hand. And God is so big that everything else is so little. It says that the nations in Isaiah 40 are like a drop of water in the bucket. That's all that we are. And it says that all of the inhabitants of the earth are like grasshoppers. Do you have grasshoppers here? Yeah. That's all we are. God is so big. Everything else is so little. That's how great our God is. It says here, at the end of verse number five, it says that he dwells on high. The idea is not just that he's... He's up there, but that he is, he is seated on his throne. God said in Isaiah 6, 66, heaven is my throne. Amen. Earth is my footstool. Yeah. 
And you see, it's not just that God is so big. He towers over all creation. But this God rules over all of his creation. He is in charge and he is in control. It may feel like to us that things are out of control. But he is always in control. He rules over every centimeter. I want to say inch. We use inches. <laughs> every centimeter of this planet, God rules. It's his greatness. And it says there, who is like the Lord our God? He cannot be compared to anyone else. Someone comes up to you and says, what is your God like? Is he like Buddha? Is he like Allah? No. No. He is, there is no one that he can be compared with. He is in a class, in a category by himself. He cannot be compared. Think of it with our God. Our God, the Bible says, we use a big word. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. The idea is, is that God is everywhere at all times. With all of his being. You tell me who's like that. Is there anyone else who is in all places at all times with all of his being? Is Satan, even Satan himself, can he be at all places at all times? Who is like the Lord our God? Our God is a three in one God. He's a trinity. He is... One God, but he's in three persons. Mm -hmm. So someone might say to you, does that mean that you worship three gods? Mm -hmm. No, we do not worship three gods. Does that mean you worship one God who just shows up in three different ways? No. We worship there three separate persons, but there's only one God. Three separate persons. Three separate persons, only one God. How can this be? I don't know. But it's the truth who is like the Lord our God. No one. There's no one greater. No one higher. This is why we must praise the Lord at all times in all places. But our great God is also very, very good. And the Bible goes on to talk about his goodness. He's way up there. But he cares about what's going on down here. You see there in verse number 6 it says... That he humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. The idea is it's God who's so big, he towers over his creation. And yet he stoops down to, to see and to understand what is happening in, in our lives. He cares about our lives every day, the ordinary circumstances of our lives. And not only is he concerned about our lives, but he cares for those who are. Do you see it here? In verse number 7 it says that he cares for the poor and the needy. He cares for the barren. These are the people that society, a city would say, they're, 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 they're not valuable. They have no worth. They can't produce. And yet God cares. The highest cares for the lowest in society. This is how good our God is. Think of it here. It says the poor and the needy. The poor and the needy. And look at where God finds the poor and the needy. In verse number 7 it says that he finds them in the ash heap. That's the garbage pile. God finds the poor and the needy. They would take their trash and they would take it outside of the city. And there in the valleys they would burn it. And the poor and the needy would go to the garbage pile hoping maybe they could find a little bit of food. Or maybe they could get a little bit of warmth by that fire. That's where God finds them. That's where the believing poor turns to him and says, God rescue me, help me. God finds them there, but he does not leave them there. Because it says, what does he do then? In verse 7, it says, he raises the poor, he lifts the needy, and it says that he may seat him with princes, with princes of his people. That's what God does for the poor and the needy. Now, 
Does that mean that if a poor and a needy person turns to the Lord, that he's going to give them a big house, and that he's given them a nice car, like Herb's man? <laughs> Lots of food. Is that what it means here? <coughs> we have to be careful with this, don't we? But God will hear for those who are poor and needy, and they need help. They need to be delivered and rescued. Amen. If they turn to God, God will hear them. He sees them, he hears them, and he will help them. And think with me about this. For somebody, the poor and the needy, they turn to Jesus, and they say, Jesus, I am a sinner. <coughs> Jesus, I deserve your eternal judgment. Jesus, I cannot save myself. Jesus, you died for my sins. Jesus, you rose again the third day. And I'm calling on you, Jesus, as my only hope. Save me from my sins. Listen, if you do that, if a poor and needy person does that, then do you know what happens? In Jesus Christ, that poor person is rich. And in Jesus Christ, yeah. that poor person is royalty. They are kings and they are queens and they are princes. Yes. That's what he does for you if you turn to Jesus. And someday, someday, when the kingdom comes, when the, when the king comes, and when the kingdom comes, someday, the poor and the needy who have turned to Jesus Christ, they will inherit the earth. Theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. He will say to the poor and the needy, the believers, come on in. Yeah. You are welcome here. You belong in my kingdom. Come and feast with my people. Yes. You may be poor and needy today, but if yeah. you are believing in Jesus Christ someday, someday, you will be in the kingdom and you will be ruling and you will be rich. That's his goodness. But look, not only the poor and needy, but it also talks about the barren. Mm -hmm. The woman who cannot bear children. Mm -hmm. Now, when this was written, mm -hmm. if you could not have a child, mm -hmm. that was a terrible disgrace and shame to yourself mm -hmm. and to your husband mm -hmm. and to your community. Mm -hmm. And here the barren woman is one who turns to the Lord. Dear Lord, I... I am not able to have children. Open my womb. Does God care about the barren woman? Does God see her in her barrenness? Does he move to help her? And in the Bible, we have story after story of barren women. And God opened their wombs and allowed them to have children. Do you remember the story of Hannah? In first. Samuel chapter 1 and 2. Hannah. Remember Hannah? Mm -hmm. There were two wives married to one man. Yeah. Not recommended. <laughs> Not for a happy home. Never. And wife number 2 was having lots of children. Mm -hmm. Wife number 1, Hannah, could have no children. Mm -hmm. They would go up to Shiloh. That's where the tabernacle, the worship place was. They would go up to Shiloh once a year. There they would worship the Lord. They would have a big feast. And remember Hannah there, no children. And she's sitting there. She cannot eat. She is not hungry. She is crying. She is weeping. And she gets up after the meal, and she goes in front of the tabernacle, and she begins to pray. Her lips are just moving. She's praying in her heart. And she is saying, O Lord of hosts, great God, look upon us. The yeah. affliction of your maids. Mm. God, can you see me? God, can you hear me? Mm. God, will you care for me? Will you help me? What, what did God do for Hannah? What did God do? He opened her womb mm. and gave her a son. Yes. And she named him. What was his name? Samuel. Mm. What is that in Kosa? Samuel. Okay, Samuel. <laughs> pretty much the same. Yeah. Do you know what Samuel means? God has heard. Okay. God has heard. You see the goodness of God. In you. God is way up there. He's so big, high above the nations, high above the heavens. And yet God looks down and he sees Hannah. Mm. 
In her barrenness, he hears her prayer. He cares for her, and he helps her. That's what our great God does. He is such a good God. Something else you should know, though, about this, this Psalm 113 is that they would, they would say this when they have the Passover meal. Remember the Passover meal? This goes all the way back to Egypt and Exodus. And remember how the ten plagues and how God brought Israel out of Egypt and brought them, split the Red Sea, and they walked through on dry ground. Remember that story? Yeah. And then they had a holiday. Every year they would remember that. It was called Passover, remember? Mm -hmm. And you see, they, this particular psalm that they would, they would say at Passover, they remembered what God had done for them in his goodness. How he had rescued them from their slavery and bondage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But Passover, the Passover story in the Old Testament, it was just a picture. Yeah. It pointed forward to something greater. What was that greater? The greater Passover lamb, the greater rescue and deliverance was when at the cross, Jesus Christ took our place, took our sins, the Father punished the Son for our sins. And His shed blood now covers our sins and keeps us from judgment. He is our Passover lamb. Yeah. And you see, as we think about the goodness of God, does he care for the poor and the needy? Yes. Does he care for the barren? Yes. But he has cared for us. He has showed us his goodness in the sending of Jesus Christ so that we can be delivered from our bondage and slavery to sin, so that we can be free forever Amen. and go to heaven someday. Amen. Our God is so great and so good Praise the Lord. Amen. At all times. Amen. In all places. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now listen to me. We know how to praise. We know how to boast and talk about things that we're amazed by. I've been, uh, Herb has been taking me around here in Nisna, and I was able to see some of the, the, the beautiful ocean. He took me up to Brenton-on-Sea, mm -hmm. a fisherman's walk, and I went down below. I took a picture, and I... I put on top of that picture, I put the words, this is the most spectacular, beautiful beach I have ever visited. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you, what was I doing? I was praising, I was being amazed mm -hmm. by the beauty of Naizna, yeah. and I was praising that beauty to other people. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing kids in town talking about, about, uh, you know, soccer players or soccer games, and, and they're and they're talking about how great that play was, or how great that player is, or how great that game is, and what are they doing? They're praising. <laughs> I've heard people talking about movie actors. <coughs> Somebody asked me if I knew Justin Bieber. I did not know Justin Bieber. <laughs> But I've heard people talking about movie actors and actresses and how great they are. Did you see that movie? It was so amazing. What are they doing? They're praising. Yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been, yesterday, last night, I was at a bride. And I had some four verse. Is that right? Four verse? Is that right? Am I not saying it right? Am I speaking in tongues? <laughs> And I had some ostrich last night. Very good. Very good. Never before in my life. And I've been, I've been, I'll be telling people when I go back to America what I had at that bride. So good. I'll be boasting about your, about your food. We do this all the time. Things that we are amazed by. Things that are great to us. And we boast of it. We tell other people about how amazing it is. Let me. Let me ask you the question. Is there anyone greater than our God? No. Let me ask you another question then. Have you been telling other people about the greatness of your God? Yes. Have you been thinking about his greatness and his goodness in your mind, in your, in your heart? 
We need to be praising the Lord to other people. We need to yeah. be praising the Lord in our own hearts and in our own minds. And invite other people, come with me. Come see the greatness and the goodness of my God. Come join me in praising the Lord and offering Him the worship and the glory that is due His grace. That's why I have come today, Pastor Jesus. Is I have come to talk about the greatness and the goodness of our God. And how we, his servants, are to be praising the Lord at all times and in all places. Let me pray. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, God Almighty, you are the greatest. And you are the highest. There is none like you. But we, your people, love you. We love to worship you. We love to praise you. Father, I pray that you would help us tomorrow and the next day for the rest of our lives to be a people of praise. I pray that you would add to this group of people, that you would be saving people here, and that this group would be growing, that there would be more people praising you. You are worthy of our praise, oh God. We offer this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 John. So don't leave that good place. I'm coming baby because don't leave that good place. Thank you so much. Uh, Why you are standing here, my brother? Give me your mama, nani or dada, but abacha. Allow me this afternoon to say to you, whatever that you heard from this man today, and you believe that God is saying it to you, take that. Go home, go to your workplace, go to your school, and apply that. Go and apply it in your life. Work it. When you work it, it will work. Number two, our God cares for us. God cares for us. <laughs> Even if your emotions and your feelings sometimes fool you to think that God does not care, allow me today to remind you as I emphasize on what John just said. Utiko And the God that cares about you God does not want you to die in sin. He does not want you to die in sin. And the only way that you can be saved, the only way that you can be saved it's to accept Jesus in your life. Amen. It's to surrender your life to Jesus. Amen. The Bible is clear in the book of Romans that we confess with our mouths mm. that Jesus is Lord. We believe with our hearts that he died for our sin and he was raised from the dead on the third day. And when we do that, Paul guarantees us that we shall be saved. Amen. In John, we get to learn that all those who accepted him, him, Jesus, gave them right to be the children of God. Amen. So just before we close today, if you are here, you hear this, you want to see God caring for you, you want to experience this big God who cares for us. It starts with Jesus. And just before we close and we go home, if you are here, why do we bow our heads, our eyes closed? If you are here, you never, never in your life prayed the prayer of giving your life to the Lord. Where you seated, where you are, I want you to raise your hand so I can pray with you. If you call you never ever accepted Jesus. You never ever surrendered your life to the Lord. You are here and where you are seated, you can raise your hand and pray with you.
Father, we thank you for this family of believers. We praise your name that all of us here, as a sign of not raising our hands, our lives are already in you. I pray that may you keep us in your perfect way until the day of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The second thing I want us to do, now that's the reason I kept you here, my brother. The second thing I want us to do is, if you are here and you are sick, you have been experiencing any kind of sickness, I mean any kind of sickness, James, he teaches us that if there is anyone sick among you, let him call the elders of the church. And let the elders of the church pray for him or for her, anointing that person with oil. Today we don't have an oil. I don't have oil, but we believe that the power is not in the oil. We believe that the power is in the mention of the name of Jesus. Amen. So, and But what I want, I want us not to miss this opportunity. Because we believe that God cares for you. We believe that God cares for you. And I believe from the bottom of my heart that he is able to heal you. Yeah. While we are taking this song, while we are seated, oh, Papa, we have anyone who is sick here, please come and join us. We're going to lay our hands unto you, me and my brothers tonight. It's not tonight, it's afternoon. Come help join us. Oh, yeah, you to remember that his grace is sufficient 
Amen. for you. Amen. Whatever that you might be going through, God might be allowing it so that one day you may preach to someone. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. But the Lord, creator of heavens and earth, the ruler of all things, he cares for you. Amen. Let's clap for the Lord. The last thing that I want to, to do, can you help? Thank you, my brother. Come, John, I'm not done with you. I'm not done with you. You can sit here next to me. I'm not done with you. You are breaking the chain. Again. Again. I can tell. He's been giving you ostrich and muffins. And muffins. And muffins. I cannot stay long. I cannot stay long. I tell you, go to my brother. The last thing, please, help just before we do the last thing. I want us to take this opportunity. Can I ask you all women, not about Mama and Ella? Let's grab this opportunity that we are granted today. Help, come and join me, my brother. Come and join me. The Anikala Mama who was a tower with all, 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 all humanity and all respect. The Anikala Mime Lineao, so that we have, we can pray for you. As we say, Mama. 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 Father, we thank you for the mothers that you place in our lives. They have cared for us. They have shared their lives with us. They have walked with us through our own difficult times and through our happy times. They have been there for us. Many of them have fed us and cared for us uh, at times when we did not even know they were caring for us. I've had a mother personally who introduced me to Jesus. Thank you for that. Lord, these mothers who have graciously given up themselves have been an example to us of the way Jesus gave himself for us. And so we thank you for these ladies. We pray your blessing on them. Would you go before them? Would you strengthen them? Would you help them in their daily lives and daily struggles? We thank you that you take, as the passage said today, you take the barren woman and make her the joyous mother of children. I see even in this church all the kids who are here. Lord, may these mothers who are in this church, may you use them to be mothers to the children who are here that they would also be raised up to learn to praise your matchless name. Thank you, Lord, for these mothers. Bless them, we pray, because of Jesus and in his name. Amen. 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 You may be sitting at hand to have the last one. Can you find a common dream with her? Come, can you find it? The last one, we are closing, we are going home. The last one that I want us to do, I'm going to get there, I'm going to go back to the other one. I'm going to go back to the uh, the squad. We're going to pray for you. This man he is going to declare a blessing upon you, the blessing of the Lord. And we're going to speak in tongues. To you. <laughs> so you'll be speaking in the sitcoms. We trust the Holy Spirit will interpret. And, and if the Holy Spirit does not interpret, ask now when you go home. You know, he will. That's it. The Taliban, I request the church to stretch the hands. As we thank this servant of God, as we praise God for such a word that He brought to us today to remind us that we have a God who is bigger than anything. The Atala that I'm going to go by is the Tanda from the Lord and Miguel Apeyo. Mama, we too, no man, no one there. She told her to be so positive and blessed. I'm done the bow. I'm making a long time to go back to the Lord. Utumia mwenye mkozi kwa 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 k
As I stand before you, what, am I, what I am about to say to you, please understand me. I am not saying it out of pride, nor saying it out of arrogance, but I am saying it because I trust in the one that has called me. You're not going to regret yourselves following me as I follow the Lord. And as we close today, I want to encourage you, follow me as I follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I guarantee you, you're going to go where Jesus is. If Jesus is in heaven, I guarantee you that's where you're going to end. Because I want to be where Jesus is. Yeah. Even if he is in hell, I want to be there as, as long as Jesus Christ is there. So if you're going to follow me, I guarantee you, you're not going to regret yourself. You're not going to hear Ufundi Sue and Ubunokolanga and Amania Lawenza and the Nazi of the South Africa in the entire world. You won't regret following me as I follow the Lord. I say this not because I'm arrogant or I'm proud. I'm, I'm saying this only because I trust the one who has called me. I trust that one. I trust him that he is able to keep me. This is one way you sober. Who was a woman taking his own? Shall we stand and receive the blessing as we go home? Let's receive the blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord shine his face unto you and be gracious to you. May the Lord smile and shine his eyes unto you and fill you with his peace. I pray that may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding, his grace and the love of our Father Jehovah and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us all until the day of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we clap for the Lord? Can we just pray for us? As we go home, I want you to today, I want to ask a favor from you. I want to ask you a favor. Find a mother and heart that mother just for me. Ogopa uyiyelo bone, please hug her until she tells to me. Ogopa nyama hug her until I tell her to a yellow bone. Just like a mother and hug her for me. Just hug her for me until she can make her mother stay. Let's go.